Okay, so in this video, I will be talking about the packaging of DNA. Now, you know that the cell has a nucleus and all the DNA that ever is present is present inside a nucleus. But in an average human being, the DNA is around 2.2 meters long. And the nucleus is only around 5 micrometers in diameter. So how does a 2.2 meter long DNA fit inside a nucleus that's only 5.5 micrometer in diameter? This happens because of this packaging of DNA. And when you're packaging DNA, it goes through a lot of steps and forms this very dense chromatin material, which is what I've depicted in this pink color. It is when your DNA packages with proteins called histones and non-histone chromosomal proteins that are present inside your nucleus. So first, a histone molecule is a protein which is positively charged and it is basic. Now we know that a DNA is negatively charged and it is also basic. So the DNA get attracted to the histone molecules and it wraps around the histone molecules to form the package structure which we call the bead in the string. So it looks a little something like this. So a histone molecule is a histone molecule or should I, I should say protein, a histone protein has five subunits and the five subunits are H1, H2A, H3, um, H4, and also H2B. And these four of these are occurring in pairs. So H2A, H2B, H3, and H4 occur in pairs, which means there are eight of them. And all these eight form an octomer octamer, which essentially looks like a sphere cut up into eight parts. So you could imagine, imagine this is a sphere and it's cut up into eight parts and each part is one of these proteins. So a histone octamer is formed by the proteins, which are H1A, H, I mean H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. And the histone proteins are very rich in two amino acids. And these amino acids are lysine and arginine. And the H1 protein is actually called a plugging protein. And what a plugging protein does is that it helps attach the DNA that wraps around the histone protein and keeps it together. So I showed you that picture over here. This yellow yellow protein over here helps the DNA that it wraps, surrounds the histone octamer. So this orange stuff is the octamer. And yeah, I've written it here, the octamer. And the H1 protein helps the DNA bind to the octamer. So the DNA Right, uh, the DNA goes around the histone protein 1.65 times, so that's approximately twice. So a DNA comes and it wraps around the histone protein twice before leaving it. And it does this with all the other histone molecules and it forms something that looks like this, which is called the bead in the string. So it looks like beads in a string. Right? So next, after this 
DNA packages to form a bead in a string model, it goes to form a solenoid. And a solenoid is essentially when six, a solenoid is when six of those beads come together. So they look a little like this. So if you look at this thing from the top view over here, you can see something like this. So this would have the DNA coiled around it and what's inside of it, um, the middle would be the orange color histone molecule. And so over here in the bead and string model, when you take this much of that structure, so you have the DNA the octamer and the H1 mod protein, this is called the nucleosome. And this is called the nucleosome. And this much of DNA that is between two of these beads is called the linker DNA. And you could imagine it as something like the string that goes between the beads. And the linker DNA, along with this nucleosome, is called the chromatosome. Chromato zone which is the linker DNA plus nucleosome. So the solenoid has around six nucleosomes and it has more on it around it and it keeps going like a spiral and it looks a lot like a telephone cord. I mean, I'm so sorry, <laughs> telephone cord. And after forming this telephone cord-like structure, this thing goes and forms the chromatin. And a chromatin is formed by making loops like this with the solenoid fiber. So all of this would be the solenoid fiber. And over here, this yellow color structure you can see here is the non-histone chromosomal protein. And it's important to note that in a cell, the, in the cell, I told you that this would be the chromatin, right? Chromatin. And this is that chromatin. And in that chromatin, you can see over here that some of it is denser and some of it is lighter. So this purp darker purple would be dense. And the lighter purple would be loose. The reason it's so is because the loosely packed um, chromatin network undergoes transcription. So the loosely packed, the loosely packed chromatin and is transcriptionally active. And what that means is that the loosely packed DNA can undergo transcription to form RNA and that eventually forms more proteins. But the densely packed nucleus does not and it's usually because it stores more genetic information which does not code for proteins and RNA and it, it does not have a particular function so it's, it's better off to coil off in a more denser form and that's why it's called dense denser chromatin and the loose chromatin is called the euchromatin and the densely packed chromatin would be called the heterochromatin and this chromatin can go undergo more um, packaging to form a chromosome and before that it forms something called the chromatid which is having a diameter around 700 nanometers and that also includes more and more of these non-histone chromosomal proteins and other proteins to form a chromosome but a chromosome only occurs in metaphase 
and the metaphase comes in the division where you look at um, meiosis and mitosis where you form chromosomes before they cross over and they split and the middle and stuff like that. So when a cell is in its resting phase or when it's not reproductively active, this the DNA is all in the chromatin form and not in the nucleus, I mean, and not in the chromosome form. And that's important to remember. It is in the chromatin form and not the chromosome. But to look at an overview again, the DNA undergoes the first type of packaging, which forms the bead on the string model or the nucleosomes. And it goes under more packaging, which forms solenoid, which is again six of the nucleosomes joined together and it forms like a spiral, somewhat a spiral, which again forms loops to form chromatin with the non-histone proteins. And these are the histone proteins. And eventually when you're ready for reproduction, the DNA packages into a more denser form, which is the chromosome.